Tennessee is a dual fault state, which doesn't mean we just have two faults in the state of Tennessee. Geologically, I think we may, but in the divorce area, we're concerned with divorces either being uncontested, which is generally irreconcilable differences, or contested using one of the traditional grounds that have to be proved. You have to go uncontested or contested. In, in either way, there are certain requirements you must fulfill. Uncontested sounds easy. You need a written marital dissolution agreement in every case. And if you have children, you have to have a parenting plan. Both these documents have to be in writing, signed off by both spouses, and approved by court. Now, that's usually a very short hearing with the court pretty much saying grace over what you can agree to. If you can agree, then you have to go the traditional grounds right. Let me put this in context. You have to understand, to understand it correctly, you have to understand the history. And the history goes back to the church because historically the church was in charge of divorce. If you wanted to get divorced, you had to get the church to approve it. We all know about Henry VIII and his problem getting divorced. And Henry made the, the great move of pulling the divorce from out of the Catholic Church all the way over to the Church of England. Not much of a move for almost anybody but Henry because Henry also decided to make himself the head of the Church of England. So conflicts of interest were really not a concept they dealt with back then. So that's how Henry got divorced, pretty much, when he wanted to. History goes on. Eh, there's problems with it being with the church. And in the colonies, well, there were some issues about a church or the church or this church or that church being charged in charge of divorce so we had bills of divorcement even in colonial times, and it was a bill of divorce. Quite truly, the legislature granted divorces. Thomas Jefferson, that great intellect, was one of America's early divorce lawyers. He presented to the House of Burgesses why his client should be divorced, and he did a wonderful job of researching all the religious reasons why people should be divorced in the Christian context. And that's what he presented to the House of Burgesses uh, in the divorce case. We don't descend from Virginia, but we descend from the state right below it, North Carolina, which pretty much did the same thing Virginia did. And the legislature was in charge of it. Tennessee descended from North Carolina. The legislature dealt with it. And one of the first things the legislature figured out is we don't want to do this and they dumped it on the courts. And it's been with the courts ever since. And it started with the courts in this vague, amorphous world of equity. And the court was supposed to do what's right. Well, you know, the problem with doing what's right, your idea of what's right and your idea of what's right, are those the same ideas? No. No. Not nearly room. So you had all these chancellors making all these different decisions, and the legislature said, well, wait a minute. we got to straighten this out or it's going to come back on us. So they started articulating grounds for divorce. Okay, If all this sounds archaic and moralistic, it, that is because it is. Okay, so, so if you're thinking that can't be right because it's this moralistic, archaic thing, yes, that is right. So with that, they started adopting, articulating grounds for divorce. The big ground for divorce is adultery, okay? Even the Bible uh, in places says that's okay. Now, you've got adultery, habitual drunkenness or abuse of narcotic drugs that has been contracted since the marriage. An interesting defense to that is when the uh, spouse comes in and says, my husband is a drunk. Uh, the interesting defense is for husband's attorney to come in and say, yep, he's a drunk, always been a drunk, probably always will be, but he didn't contract it during the marriage. She married him 
full well knowing he was a drunk and actually used to drink with him. Uh, now, this is the closest we have to a no-fault ground that isn't irreconcilable difference. It's living separate and apart for two years with no minor children. Interesting history to that was it was in the legislature. There was a guy in the legislature who couldn't get divorced, didn't have grounds. Wife wouldn't sign a marital dissolution agreement. And so he proposed to the legislature that one year separate apart, no minor children, you got divorced. His buddy in the legislature wouldn't pass it. Then the next year he introduced two years separate apart, they still wouldn't pass it. Then he introduced three and they were tired of hearing about it, so they passed it. Then after a few years, they cut it back to two. So two years separate apart, no minor children. All you gotta do is prove that to a judge, that's pretty simple, and then you can get divorced. There are other grounds such as willful and malicious desertion for one year, conviction of a felony and sentencing to the penitentiary, uh, willful, and this one, Tennessee is a very egotistical state. We think we are great, okay? We think we are so great that one of the grounds for divorce is that you have moved to Tennessee. You have been in Tennessee for one full year and your spouse won't move here with you. Okay? Can any state think more highly of themselves than that? That's another one of the grounds for divorce. There's some interesting ones like uh, impotency, sterility, bigamy. Bigamy becomes interesting from time to time. Uh, indignities offered by one spouse to the other. That's uh, called general indignities. Abandonment and refusal to uh, or neglect to provide for the spouse, even though you're able to do. But if you want the list of divorce grounds, go to our website, aboutdivorce.com, and go to the pull-down tabs, and you'll get the list there. Now, one of the things about grounds, there are also defenses. Again, if you go to the website, you get more complete list of them. But one of the things you've got to look out for is condemnation. That applies to adultery. It applies in this way if you know of your spouse's adultery and you forgive it, you've condoned it. Tennessee is a very practical state and they defined real forgiveness in almost all cases of, with, did you have sex with them again? And if you did, by and large, the cases say that's the end of the discussion. So, another one is insanity. Now, you might think of insanity as a grounds for divorce, and it is in some states. In Tennessee, though, it's a defense, but you've got to prove it to a very high standard. So, that's an overview of grounds for divorce. And in the world of divorce, grounds is your ante at the beginning of the game. Uh, and it is the beginning of contemplating the strategy that you're going, your lawyer is going to need to put together to effectively represent you. Thank you. And again, please look at our website, aboutdivorce.com.